welcome to Liberty Park Music. I'm Michelle Huang, your piano instructor. In our lesson today, we'll learn about tetrachords and the major scales. We will also review the thumb crossing technique that we talked about a few lessons ago and how it is used to play the major scales. In today's lesson, we will only focus on the scales of C, D, E, G, and A. Let's first talk about what tetrachords are. A tetrachord is a series of four notes with a pattern of whole step, whole step, half step. A major scale is made of two tetrachords joined by a whole step. Each scale begins and ends on a note of the same name as the scale. Any major scale can be formed by following the sequence of whole and half steps. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. In this lesson, we will only focus on five major scales. C, D, E, G, and A. Pause the video now and spend a few minutes to write out the correct keys to form each major scale. Using the sequence of whole and half steps we just talked about, to help you with this exercise. Check your answers here. Let's take a look at the fingerings for the major scales. We will start with C major. Notice that we will need to use the thumb crossing technique to play the scale. To review, a thumb crossing technique is used to navigate a keyboard with only five fingers but still able to connect the notes without hopping from one note to another. It's a way of shifting position without having to pick up your hands and interrupt the sound. There are two ways the thumb can be crossed. One is that thumb goes under the other fingers. One is that the other fingers cross over the thumb. The major scale will use both of these ways to move up and down the scale. As we go up the scale, the thumb follows behind each finger that is being played. Keeping a natural hand position so the thumb has room to move. As the third note is played, keeping a balanced weight on that third finger. Using it as a pivot as the thumb swings past the third finger. Transferring the weight from the third finger to the thumb as the rest of the fingers finish playing the rest of the scale. Now we go back down, balance our weight on the thumb, using it as the pivot this time, swing the rest of the hand over the thumb, shifting the weight from the thumb to the third finger as we move into the new position and play the rest of the scale. For both thumb crossing techniques, it's important to remember transfer the weight from finger to finger in one fluid gesture so there's no break or interruption of the sound. Also be careful not to collapse your hand position during thumb crossing. This will produce unwanted accents.
also avoid twisting your elbow during the clump crossing. This will disrupt the alignment of your hand and wrist and also interrupts the flow of the music. Let's play the C major scale on the right hand again. Let's play the left hand once by itself, paying attention to the thumb crossing as we play. Pivot on the thumb, swing the hand over the thumb, shifting away from the thumb to the third finger in one fluid gesture. As we come back down, the thumb tucks in behind each finger. Pivot on the third finger, the thumb swings under, transfer the weight, and finish the scale. Let's play again. Put both hands together. Notice that the thumbs are crossing at different times. So coordination is an issue here. Let's take it slowly. Here the right hand thumb crosses under as the left hand continues with the five finger pattern. Then the left hand crosses the thumb Let's play the ascending scale again, paying attention to different times the thumbs are crossed. Now going down, using the same fingerings we have just used to go up. The left hand thumb tucks under. right hand crosses over the thumb. Let's play the descending scale again. the third fingers come together. This is a good indication that you're playing with the right sequence of fingerings. mistake is to not to switch to the thumb until after the fourth finger on the right hand. Which will result with a four instead of a five ending on the top. This is problematic when we do continue upwards to the next few octaves. So remember to switch to the thumb on three on the right hand and the three crosses over on the left hand to follow. in details the fingerings and the thumb crossing technique for C major scale. For the other four scales that we will talk about in lesson today, they will follow the same pattern and fingerings. We will talk briefly about each one. For each scale, we will start playing with the right hand first, 
then left hand, then hands together. Unlike C major, D major has two sharps, which will require that we adjust our wrist and hand position to accommodate for the black keys. Keep that in mind as we play the scale. Let's start with the right hand first. We tuck the thumb in behind each finger, raise the wrist a bit for the F sharp. Pivot on the third finger, thumb comes under. Pivot on the thumb, hand comes over the thumb, raise the wrist, third finger on F sharp. Let's play the left hand. Pivot on the thumb, three comes over. Pivot on three, thumb tucks under. together. E major scale on the right hand. scale on the left hand. Hands together. G major scale on the right hand. G major scale on the left hand. Major scale hands together. A major scale on the right hand. scale on the left hand. A major scale hands together. Continue to 
practice these five scales. Play them hands separately first, then hands together, paying attention to the fingerings and hand position. Next, we'll look at a short piece that we use one of the scales that we have just learned. We are in D major. The lowest and highest notes of the right hand are both Ds, exactly an octave apart. The notes in between forms the D major scale. The left hand plays a series of intervals. Let's first get started with the right hand, paying attention to where the thumb crossing occurs and transfer weight in one smooth gesture. Let's play and count the right hand once. One and two and three and four and 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 Like we said before, the left hand consists of a series of intervals. The first one is a fifth, followed by a second, third, back to the second, fourth, third, second. so on and so forth. Notice that the top note, A, remains the same, only the bottom note changes. Remember to lift your hands slightly to restrike the keys. When we put hands together, be mindful of connecting the right hand while the left hand lifts. Let's play hands together. transpose to another key. Let's try A major. Remember the intervals, fingerings, and tunes stay the same in a transposition, only the pitches change. Let's play an A major scale on the right hand to warm up first.
For your homework, transpose this to C major, E major, and G major scales to review the fingerings and thumb crossing technique. In our lesson today, we learn about tetrachords and the correct fingerings and technique for playing the five major scales we talked about today. Continue to practice these scales and review the thumb crossing technique and the fingerings for each. In addition to the short piece we have discussed, you will find another short piece that will review the G major scale on the left hand for your homework. Do transpose to the four other scales we have talked about today to get more practice of the major scales. See you next time.